Welcome back to the Fantasy Basketball Trash Talk channel. We have a special episode for the kids today. When is it okay to veto? Now, you might have just had one of your special little trades vetoed, or someone you don't like in your league just got a tasty, tasty deal, and now you're going, I want to veto him. I want to veto him. Well, I'll tell you this right now. Nothing gets people more upset and angry and in an argument than vetoing. So I decided to make an official guide. I'm going to talk you through when it's okay to veto, when it's not, okay? First of all, you need to know the types of veto. People veto for all kinds of reasons, sometimes right reasons, sometimes wrong reasons. The first reason, and probably the only reason you should be vetoing is collusion. What does the word collusion mean? It means when two people collude and they get together and they scheme and they try to cheat and they make a plan, a sinister plan. And they go, you know what? You know what, mate? I just want you to win and I'm going to take a lose because I, I like to lose. It's, it's my thing. It gets my rocks hard. Okay. And then the other guy goes, yes, yes, I will take your, your Steph Curry and I will give you this, you know, broken down Dennis Schroeder. I'm, I don't know why I'm doing it. Collusion is stupid and it's cheating. Okay. The second type of trade is, oh, man, I didn't know. Oh, man, I didn't know. And that would be somebody, one of your friends, maybe he's a football guy, doesn't ever get on Twitter. And you know what? He's making a trade for Michael Porter Jr. He doesn't know that Michael Porter Jr. might be out for the season. Oh, man, I didn't know. When I hit accept, I didn't know. The next kind of trade is just a taco trade. It's a trade where one guy wasn't trying to help the other guy. It's just that guy was stupid. And you can look at the trade and go, this guy's a dummy. This guy thinks Carmelo Anthony's good in 2021. Punt fits. Now, if you're new to nine category fantasy basketball, this might confuse you. If you're playing points, ignore what I'm saying right now. A punt fit is where one player has, one, one team has a player that's really bad at, like, let's say, field goal percentage. Let's use Freddie Van Fleet as an example. Historically, Fred Van Fleet plays like a second or third rounder, unless you put him on a team that is punting. Field goal percentage. If you put Fred Van Fleet on that team, he's like a top six player. So if you see a team trading two or three really good players for Fred Van Fleet, like two second round quality players, and then you go, oh, wait, that's that's way, wor way more than he's worth. Okay, well, we need to look and see, is the team playing to their punt? Because sometimes punt values are very different than overall values. If you don't understand that, sometimes people end up vetoing perfectly good trades. The next kind of trade that some type, of, some type of people will veto, it's called the injured stash. That's where you see, okay, bam, the news came out today. Bam's going to go down for six weeks. Someone who's in the one seed position goes, well, I have an injured reserve spot. I, I can stash him or I can carry the dead spot. I'll offer, a, I don't know, a Tyler Hero, 80 range player. And I want to get Bam, top 20 player. Is that vetoable? Carrying the injured player. The final reason that people make trades is not collusion. It's not spite. It's just spite. It's they hate someone and they don't want that player to have a certain player. They want to help a player win a certain matchup. Okay. Time by time. Should we veto? If it's collusion, the answer is yes. If there's even mild evidence of collusion or a strong suspicion of collusion, you should always veto that trade, whether it's league manager or league majority vote. Oh, I didn't know, man. I didn't know that, uh, that, that Michael Porter Jr. was out for the season. Do you veto that trade? No. It is the responsibility of the person accepting or sending a trade to get on Twitter, to get on Reddit, and make sure they're informed. If someone is going to – it's a slippery slope. If you start saying, okay, you can veto trades because the guy didn't know. Okay, well, what if the guy's just a bad judge of talent? What if the guy uh, thought that LeBron was going to be a top 10 player for the entire year and didn't realize that in the 11 games LeBron has played, he's been in six overtime periods. And that's inflating because he's not going to average 38 minutes a game, which is where he's at right now. You can't go down the slippery path of letting people get take backsies because they didn't know. Taco League trade, you can't veto it. And here's the reason. Just because one person was stupid, Stupid is as stupid does. What is stupid today might not be stupid tomorrow unless it's obvious that they are working together. Being stupid, being a taco is not enough. Can you veto a trade or should you veto a trade if two players are making a punt fit with one team 
getting the better overall player, but the other team getting someone that fits their punt? The answer is no. If it clearly fits their punt and, and you see four or five players that all line up together, you can't keep them from trying to improve their, their team. Injured stash, no. If the player knows the player is injured and is trying to stash them and there's a clear path. Now, if they have three IR slots already filled up and that player is going to cause them to miss the playoffs, that's a different scenario. That looks more like collusion. Spite. What's a spite trade? It looks a lot like collusion. The answer is maybe. You might. So if you're looking at this and the reasons you're giving are collusion or spite, you might be able to veto that. But if it's any of these other ones, you shouldn't be vetoing. What is the league manager's duty, okay? If your guys just have a big group text thread or group chat and you're just harassing your league manager and he has to make the decision, here's the, here's the basic rules. Your job as the league manager is to preserve the integrity of your league. Your job is to prevent cheating. It is not to be the, the captain going around and saying, you know, Chris Paul can't play for the Lakers. One of the famous moments in NBA history right before David Stern left his position was that he took the trade of Chris Paul to the Kobe Bryant-led Lakers and vetoed it. Said, no, you're not going to have that trade. A lot of owners, a lot of owners of small market teams complained that it would give the Lakers another dynasty. That's not your job. It's not your job to balance the league. It is not the job of the league manager to try to be a doctor and come in and, and grade injuries. Like, oh, well, um, I, I, I Googled back injuries and... um. You know, Michael Porter Jr. could come back this year or maybe not. No, that's not your job. All you're doing is your, it's not your job to grade strategies. Oh, that was a stupid move. I'm going to veto it for you, buddy. You're not God. Let the boys play, okay? Nine times out of 10, you shouldn't veto. Unless you see the collusion, unless you see the clear cheating, you shouldn't veto. Okay, well, what if it's a group of people? If you're in a league where it's like five votes or six votes or seven votes to veto, here's what I need you to think of. The first thing is the goose and the gander, okay? Do unto us. It's the golden rule. It's in every civilization. If you do this, other people are going to do the same thing to you. And the trade that you cancel today is the trade you want to have tomorrow. The next point is the more trades we make, the more fun it is. Trading, sending offers, negotiating, haggling. That's at least a third of the fun of fantasy basketball. Something that you need to consider is you want to have short approval times. Okay, This isn't necessarily about veto, but it is relating to it. Don't have a three-day window. Don't have a four-day window. 24 hours is more than enough time. Uh, what happens if somebody gets injured in that review time? Well, you're shit out of luck is the answer. You don't get to veto a trade because a player got injured in that waiting review period. That is wrong. Don't gang up, guys. Uh, in the league that I'm in, I'm in first place, and guys have been vetoing my trades. It's fine. I'm in first place. You can't veto my first place. But I might not be in first place in four weeks. And if the rule of thumb is we're going to veto every trade that a top two seed has, well, one day it'll be you in that top seed, and you're not going to want them to treat you like that. Okay, I'm going to give you guys a dumb veto example. This is a veto that did happen that shouldn't have happened. This happened to me last week. Before LeBron uh, went down with COVID, he had three really good games in a row. And I traded LeBron, who in that auction league went for $31. And Royce O'Neal, who went for $2, $33 total value, for C.J. McCollum and Terry Rozier, $32 in total value. You'd be hard-pressed to find a trade that is that close in auction value for players that are reasonably healthy. LeBron was coming off the abdominal injury, but he definitely didn't have any injury concerns at the time. That trade got vetoed because I'm in a punt field goal build, and C.J. and Rozier are way better for me than LeBron, and I'm in the one seed. That is a bad example of vetoing. Here is a good example of vetoing. The 11th place team in your league. Hmm, they're not doing too well. They traded Cat, Beal, and CJ McCollum. Three top players, three top 40 players. And they traded to the team in first. And the first place team gives, I should say gives. I said, I said that wrong. There are mistakes that are being made. The first place team gives away LeBron and Royce White, okay? In this example, the team that's in 11th is clearly not trying to win. They're giving up more than twice total value. They're giving up more players. So they, they, they can't make the argument that they're giving, they're getting depth. They're not getting healthier. They're not getting depth. They're not getting more top-end talent. And they're not getting punt fit. And if you don't have any of those, that is collusion. Veto that trade. Okay, guys. Hope you enjoy this. 
I'm Italian. Also, fun fact about me, not to brag, but I passed the bar exam, and I will be officially a licensed attorney in about two months. So, um, I'm going to do this segment called Judge Vito Corleone, okay? And that's the godfather. So, if you have a trade in your league, and you want someone to tell you whether it's veto-worthy, just comment on this video. Also, like and subscribe, you filthy bastard. But comment the trade on this video, and I will tell you whether or not it should be vetoed. You can use me if your league manager sucks, because I don't care about your league. I don't, I, I'm just caring about making good content, being honest, building a community. If you want me to judge your trade, whether it's vetoed or not, I need you to put the league size, 10 team, 12 team, 14 teams, the rules, roster for each team that was making the trade, each team's rank, because like if a team's first and 12th, that's suspicious, and what the trade package was. Okay, guys, that's it for now. We'll have some buy low, sell high, buy high, sell low videos coming out. Um, also, I'm going to be doing a challenge where I buy three of my subscribers' failed cash league teams. So uh, not this video yet, but I'm going to be offering people who think their season is hopeless. I will buy your team, Venmo you the money for the buy-in, take over the management of it, and see if I can't make that team to the playoffs. It'll be a fun little mini-series. Okay, guys. See you guys next time. Fantasy Trash Talk Basketball is out.